Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the War Culture Game Podcast. I'm Ben Roy, and joined today by Ewan. Hello. And James Douse. Hello. He gets his second name said because James is James Douse. Anyway, today we're here to talk about the <laughs> Xbox event that happened last night. And I don't know about you two, but I want to talk about the Halo Man because I've not seen him now for about five years. Five years. And even when we did see the Halo Man back then, half of the game was playing some called Lock. And I don't <laughs> know, everyone yeah. got upset about that. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. This is the thing, Ben Roy, because I am one of those people who yo-yoed between the Xbox and the PlayStation. I was I had the the OG Xbox, the Xbox 360, and then after they had that disastrous Xbox One reveal, I ended up getting the PlayStation Four. And um, but I've always had a longing, a yearning, if you will, for Master yeah. Chief. Um, and I was expecting Halo Infinite to really be like that thing that that really kind of triggered my my Haloiness. Um, but it didn't really do that i don't know i mean this is just me because like i was not a fan of halo 4 and then when halo 5 came around i wasn't really privy to the discourse as it were because i just by that point i'd embraced sony and i was giving the playstation a big warm hug while it was spewing dust and making loud noises in my ear um so yeah i don't know this new reveal it looked good it looked like classic halo but it also looked a little i don't know what what were you guys' thoughts on it, it because it i'm looks kind of like a mega box it all <laughs> looks mega box and cartoony <laughs> but with as you said you didn't like halo 4 personally i loved halo 4's campaign didn't like the multiplayer yeah halo 5's campaign was trash in my opinion but the multiplayer was fantastic it needed a reboot mm. in my opinion style in terms of style and story and that is what this is doing so in a way it's kind of doing what the fans have asked for but still, the fans are annoyed that they didn't do what they asked for. Is <laughs> it a full win. reboot, though? Or is it just we shoved the Master Chief in the pod again and it's kind of the same timeline? I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. like, just like, I just fry him in the bin for a bit and get him back. Like, sort of thing. For me, I, I thought the Halo 4 campaign was fine. It was so long ago that I played it. Like, mm. the, the only thing I've done with Halo 4 since is move the game that's sitting over there behind me on my shelf from place to place hundreds of miles across this country <laughs> halo 5 i waited until it came on game pass because praise game pass yeah. played it once and it left no impression on me apart from wow halo's fallen in my opinion as well far from where it was it used to be the marquee sort of thing like this is xbox you want the master chief and you want to see him finish the fight several hundred times over but for me did it halo infinite like it's trying to invoke Halo Combat Evolved back in, yep. let's say, back in the old days now. Was it 2001 that thing came out? Yes. Something crazy yeah. like that. Where Halo, Halo Combat Evolved, sorry, was trying to do, it was doing linear levels, but they were big for the time. They were, they yeah. felt sprawling, even though you could buy it, go back to like I did like, the other week and they kind of condensed. But it feels like mm. Halo Infinite is taking that feel of sort of exploring a Halo, mm. and maybe we're gonna. From what we saw, there's a there's a map, so I don't know if it's gonna be full on open world or segmented mm. open world like the last two was. I, I don't know. I, what do you guys feel about if Halo is open world? Like, I don't. For me, there is the the ever looming cloud of the open world fatigue, mm-hmm. and I get that sometimes. Whereas like, oh, I'm playing an open world game now, I feel like I should just put a podcast on and get rolling. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, I just want to drive a warthog around Halo. So I, I just yeah. want to know what you guys think. My big concern with Halo going open world, and again, is probably I probably have no leg to stand on given I haven't been invested in the series for like eight years now. Um, but the problem that I see with that is, that, like you said, the linear the linearity of the game is very good because it gives you just enough freedom to approach different you know missions from different angles. Um, ODST stood out to me. You know, obviously that had an open world hub bit yeah. when you would then go to different places and then you'd have flashbacks. I thought it was handled well there, and ODST mm-hmm. was certainly the most atmospheric Halo game. Um, it's all about whether it feels organic enough and whether or not it feels conducive to the Halo. You know series as a whole do we think the open world is did the did the series have to go open world obviously you know we can't say it did until we actually get our hands on it um but i certainly wasn't really blown away by what i saw um and you know master chief's got a grappling hook now that's cool and i i am concerned because i've not played too many first person shootery open world titles uh, bar maybe far cry 3 or far cry 2 where i was like yes 
that had to be open world. I really enjoyed that. Um, but maybe again, maybe it would go some way in, you know, really hammering home the idea of Master Chief being this one man army going up against the Covenant and taking on everyone. I don't know. The main thing that I was looking for to really trigger that nostalgic sense of longing for Halo was some multiplayer gameplay because the period from 2007 to 2010 when you had Halo, or 2000, it was 2010 when Halo Reach came out, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That period yes. is like peak, just nostalgia for games and just the best yeah. time I ever had on Xbox Live. So I feel as though if they want to win people back, maybe they're emphasizing the Master Chief love just a little bit too much and should maybe jump on the multiplayer and really be like, you yes. remember the Xbox 360? This was the definitive platform for multiplayer games. Please come back and love us some more. Whereas now they're kind of basically gone, oh, we're really catering to the hardcore of the fan base that really wanted to see Master Chief. And again, I love me a bit of Chief. Don't get me wrong, I love a little bit of Master Chief. I love John. But at the same time, <laughs> maybe it's that they're overestimating the love there maybe i don't know that might be controversial i'm talking out my ass but i don't know <laughs> i think um the multiplayer as you say is the main focus of halo and with the halo 5 campaign i played it once never played it again then i spent 100 hours on the multiplayer i'm probably going to do the same with this <laughs> so it's strange to say i don't care about the campaign of course i do but i know that i'm going to spend the most of the time in multiplayer and it should as you say have been announced yesterday what the multiplayer will be like and they didn't. Yeah, for me, I, I'm a bit of a cranky person here because when Reach got his multiplayer, I kind of had to retire because I just turned into that person that gets sniped from the other side of the map. And I was like, <laughs> oh, screw this. But one of the big problems, like not problems, things I'm thinking about Halo is we're emphasizing the Chief again. Can't remember what his mate was called. He was like, stay here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smack everyone up for you. <laughs> but Halo, does, for me, doesn't feel like he's got that many characters. And they killed Sergeant Johnson off, who was a memorable, char memorable character. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And if they kill Lockoff, which is the rumors for this next one, they're just getting characters in, and they're already offing them. I feel like where Halo is struggling compared to, say, like a Gears of War, is Gears of War has actual human characters with wants and needs, and they also have relationships, and they have family members who die off, and they can ex carry on a lineage of some sort. Mm -hmm. This is just... I'm just going to come out the fridge for a bit, shoot some people and go back. And it's a fun time, but I feel like that's where they struggle with extending the story on. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, you, you got a really good point there because I was, I don't want to like belabor the point too much in regards to, because it reminds me of comic books in a way, how a character reaches an organic end, but because they are yeah. so popular, they can't be retired. And I feel as though that has been Master Chief's issue because no one can deny how iconic he is. And Xbox is desperately sure on iconic video game mascots that can really champion the brand. So I totally get it from a business perspective that it is right to have Master Chief around and be a visible presence. Um, but, you know, in the same way that Star Wars isn't all about Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, the Halo mythos is so grand and compelling for a great many reasons. Who's to say that you couldn't do another ODST kind of um, title or maybe focus on the, the Marines as well? There are so many different places you could go with that series. And over the past you know decade, I just thought that it hasn't been there. Um, but you know, I mean, at the same time, no one can deny how great it looks. I think it does visually, yeah. you know, it's fantastic. There were some weird comparisons doing the rounds on social media yesterday from people who don't know what art direction in a video game is, <laughs> saying that it looks worse than the PlayStation 4 or whatever. I think the game looks great. Um, just, you know, it didn't really spark that, that going into it, I was like, you know what, this is going to be, I'm going to have like an intense moral conflict going forward over whether or not to get an Xbox. But it just didn't happen. I mean, there were other exclusives, though, that did kind of pique my interest if we wanted to talk about those as well. Yeah, this could be the massive Halo podcast where we just Halo and Halo. <laughs> all the time. I was about to say, we should probably move on. Now, I'm not going to go in chronological order because we won't have time to get to them all. I want to quickly dip into Fable because Fable was announced. Mm. We had a big, giant frog lad. Mm. ate a poor fairy. Mm. And then yeah. that was sort of like the opening. Now, I personally... I played some Fable. I played yeah. some Fable too. Yeah. Uh, it's in an hour, but there seems to be a, a massive fan base for this, and it's one that I've never truly really understood. <laughs> ben Roy, Ben Roy, yes. right? I I played both Fable and Fable Two, and then Fable Three, right? I, yes. for some odd reason, really, really enjoyed those games as as I played them because I thought they had charm. They have character, um, mm -hmm. you know, and no other game lets you cheat on your missus with a random person and then get an STD and then break <laughs> your entire family apart. So for that reason, Fable is a very compelling title. But at the same time, you know, um, it has been one of those things where I look back on it now and I think, 
was it ever really that amazing? Like, I, don't, I don't want to crap on anyone's enthusiasm or whatever. I think people, it's great that people are excited for the new Fable. Uh, and I wish I was excited about it as well. But it feels as though it's been so long now. And Fable 3 left such a bad taste in my mouth as well. I was just can, kind of like really bummed. That? Fable Legends game, which was coming out for Xbox One, but then ca got cancelled. That sounded like a really interesting one as well, where you had yeah. like a dungeon master who was going to like yeah. lay out the levels and you'd all take it on at the same time. I don't know. I think, you know, I, it makes sense to bring Fable back again yes. from a business perspective because Xbox is desperately found wanting when it comes to exclusives or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I, I was, I was, I was as surprised by you about the love that there was for for the Fable franchise because as much as I thought it was a charming, you know, experience, you know, Chicken Chaser and all that, I just, I didn't think it was. I didn't. It, it took me by surprise. For, if just that Fable at the time was quaint and it was different and it wasn't a shooter, and back in the sort of let's say the heyday, the Attitude Era of the 360, <laughs> it was all just people shooting things. The Halos thing it was, and then PS3 had Haze, but. I, I I think this probably could come back into some sort of like RPG. Who knows what it's going to be? Yeah, are you going to have people going through the world? You used to follow people would be lights in your world. Is that was that a thing? There was, people... there was like a minor oh, co-op element in the yeah. was it the third title or the second title? I can't remember. Um, but again, yeah, I don't know. Always a franchise with plenty of potential. Um, yeah, and that was obviously you know the big Peter Molyneux brand was the ah yes potential i'm going to talk about all the potential this game will have as if it is actually in the game itself and then when the game comes out well mm, that'll be a controversy i don't know what do you think Dallas? i'm very glad that it's being developed by playground games mm -hmm. because i've got every trust in them after the forza games forza horizon games that they made mm. and fable is pretty british isn't it really like it is a very it, it is it's, it's a british franchise and it's, it's got over the top here, yeah. Yeah, and Playground Games has the roots in Britain, so I, maybe they'll be able to dabble into the Fable franchise well. Mm. It's um, certainly a perspective that we don't get a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Mm. Um, so I've got my fingers crossed. Fingers, and they create beautiful games. So <laughs> fingers crossed for Fable, I guess. And yeah, Fable could smash it, which I think we're still trying to repair the damage from the Don Matrick era, but we'll have to see if Fable, whenever we get a trailer for it in the next two years. You know what years, you are, Ben Roy? Like, you're taking me yes. back to university here with the way we periodize stuff in history. You got like the long <laughs> 1960s, the Nixonian era. We got now we've got the Don Matrick era and, and the what, what, what era are we currently in? It was the dark yeah. times. Well, now we're in Big Phil. Big Phil yeah. is here and he's saving Big us Phil. and leading the charge. And one of the things that I feel like Big Phil was leading them in charge with, not just Game Pass, but Avowed, the kind of Elder Scrolls-esque, we're in my Elder Scrolls, but we are, game that we got like five seconds of preview footage. That yes. This is basically, hello, this is a Skyrim. I mean, this will be you know. the 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 the, the Skyrim or well, the Elder Scrolls alternative that people can actually play <laughs> in the next few years. I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> Elder Scrolls uh, Six seems so far away, and you know, Obsidian obviously have de delivered constantly great RPG titles. Um, so again, that could end up being a really good one for them. It's it's again, we really didn't see much. I know that I think yeah. I forget who tweeted it out yesterday, but there was a tweet about how loads of different companies, uh, you know, the CGI companies have really benefited recently from all these new kind of franchise <laughs> announcements because yeah. we've seen very very little gameplay. Which again is a throwback to 2007. I didn't think we'd have in the year of our Lord 2020. But again, you know, it, it, not much to say about it because we know very little about it. But at the same time, I'm here for more fantasy RPGs, so that's cool. Now I don't know about um, you two, but they, they kind of like I know, I know Big Phil has sort of danced around the fact that some of these games, like Obsidian's games, we don't know if it's going to come to the PlayStation at all because uh, uh, what's it? <clears throat> Forgot the name of the and the Our Wild, not the Our Wilds, the Outer Worlds. Sorry, that mm -hmm. was across both both games. But if they have their own sort of Elder Scrolls style game that is exclusive to Xbox, mm. this is going to be the kind of thing that is going to be like, well, now here's a reason to get an Xbox sort of yeah. thing. Whereas we've got so much, I say we. Whereas there is so much on PlayStation right now with Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Two, just look, and then go back even further to like God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn. There's been so many massive tiles, massive like standout games reasons to own that console mm. and this gen it's kind of been like eh. so it seems like the groundwork's being laid for the path to 
having some sort of equal fight, even though people are saying they're not interested in the that's, console wars. That's the it's point just, that I wanted weird. to ask, is the, the idea of the Xbox platform being above the console war in some sort of strange way. And I feel as though this is a very weird decision for them to go down. Again, I can see why they've done it, because like you just mentioned there, the Xbox One had a dismal offering of first party licenses and PlayStation constantly beat Xbox time and time again over the past five and um, seven years, the likes of Spider-Man, God of War, Last of Us, all that sort of stuff. Um, and for Xbox to turn around after buying so many first party studios as well to then say, oh, we're above kind of this console wall, wall malarkey. We'll, we'll offer our games to everyone. We're the good guys of gaming. Look at us, Xbox, we're doing the good thing. Um, but that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, people buy consoles a lot of the time. I mean, if they, when we're getting to a point now where the hardware is so pretty much almost indistinguishable, you know, you're really scrutinizing over the minor, minor details here people buy consoles over um, whether they're playing with their friends and what kind of games that, that are offered on there. Um, and, you know, especially with something like PlayStation, I think Spider-Man was a definite system seller in terms of having that license that has such a broad appeal. Um, and it seems weird for me for Xbox to then put so much effort into first party stuff, but then to potentially say, oh, we're not bothering with this for this um, console exclusivity. And uh, maybe try and paint Sony as the bad man stuck in the past or whatever. I don't know. It's a very weird thing that I'm curious to see how it plays out. Is the one thing I got from that presentation last night was assurance that I'm not going to buy the Xbox because I've got a PC. Mm. Every yeah. single game that they said was going to come out on PC and X Cloud, where I can play it on my phone. So mm. why would I buy one? But I'm going to definitely get Xbox Games Pass, which is where they make their money. Mm. And You're telling me you what? don't have that already? <laughs> oh, I've got it. Yeah. gaming, Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just, a, you, you've, yeah. embraced, you've, you've, you've embraced this subscription-based model for yes. gaming. And to me, I, you know, I, I do buy enough games a year to probably... How much does it cost a year, Games Pass? Is it... See, on PC, I've got it for three ninety nine a month. But if you got the Xbox One as well, I think it's like eight ninety nine. Ulti I get ultimate. I think that is yeah. nearer the ten pounds so a month. You will yeah. you will get your money back if you buy more than three games, is what you're telling me there. Which again, it makes yeah. sense to me. But again, you have to think about the concept of ownership and you know Xbox yeah. building a brand is an idea of that. Again, I'm very curious to see where that goes. And it's like we're having those conversations from like. 2012 all over again except they've repackaged it and made it much more consumer friendly in a way um mm. but i'm still not ready to i'm there clutched onto my physical <laughs> media like no you can't take me xbox <laughs> get away <laughs> but i don't know you, you're both um keen adopters of the games pass so yeah. I, yeah I will say unlike sony microsoft have been very friendly to the point where i have an xbox one I have no physical games for it because yeah. when I first got it, I uh, you can do a thing where you can game share with a friend. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you and one other person, you can get whatever games. And that's how I play Gears 4. And then it wasn't worth me being the game share partner because I just literally wasn't playing anything. The Xbox went in the cupboard till Gears 5. And since I brought it back out and I've put a week into Horde, I've also been playing, going back through the exclusives like Halo 5, uh, Quantum Break, I'm half free Hellblader, Void Bastards was on there, Outer mm -hmm. Worlds was on there. It's just everything keeps coming to me on Game Pass. And I it's just it just feels so good to be able to say, oh, the, I'm gonna give that a try now. I probably yeah. wasn't gonna give that currency, but now there we go. And then you find out that you've sunk so much time into it. And when I I will probably get both eventually, like you can't rip Gears of War at my soul. It's going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. So they've got the clause in me that way. But I, it's weird. At the same time, I don't think Sony should approach this. I, it's weird because they, if Sony approached it and they put all the, their A-tier games, because I have PS Now as well, but there's not really much on there of no... But if, you, if you're someone who keeps up with gaming, shall I say, but if you're someone who's going back to the backlog, there's quite a bit on there. Like... I'm thinking about finally giving Spider-Man a go because it's on PS now. Who knows? Who knows? It's, it's a busy year. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the subscription game, is, I know what you mean, the sense of ownership, but I feel like that broke in me when I first subscribed to Netflix. And ever since then, yeah. it's been wearing down, even though if you're watching the video behind me, I love my physical media. It's sitting over there. I'm going to get the physical version of the PS5 because I want that option to, you know, get a disc of eBay and, you know, save a couple of pounds basically mm -hmm. i'm not ready for the full future of digital yet even though i'm a staunch supporter of game pass 
bit of a ramble, but I think it's great, and I think it should keep going. But then, does it devalue the industry as it go on? Who knows? Mm. What do you mm. think? I mean, that's the other question I have. You know, Dad, you mentioned that there's no point in getting an, a new Xbox if everything's going to be available on your PC anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Is there an argument to be made that this next Xbox is just a halfway kind of, um, you know, a bridge towards getting people to adopt PC more? I feel as though in the past year we've seen Xbox be used more apart as a, a cohesive strategy from Microsoft in that sense to maybe encourage more people to to go with the PC. And obviously, you know, you've seen the stylistic similarities that the Xbox has had with different mm -hmm. Windows operating systems and stuff. Um, but I do wonder if maybe that's, you know, the, the grand strategy here is you get the Xbox devotees to then mm -hmm. get in, invest in the next console and then they'll understand, oh, this is all, you can actually bring this across the PC. We can play with all our friends on PC and that way yep. you, you basically, you effectively double your player base in that sense, which I think is a yep. very, you know, smart thing to do and something I haven't really considered. Um, do you see more people adopting PCs after getting an Xbox now, maybe? <laughs> There's always going to be an audience for putting a box in front of your TV. Yeah. Because I'm, currently, I'm the box I can't, man. yeah, I cannot put my PC. Oh, I mean, I can, but I can't put it into my TV. I play on my monitor on my desk. Mm -hmm. So there is always going to be an audience for the Xbox. Whether it makes people, I, I mean, I played the Xbox One and that made me want to get a PC because I know that I could play the games I was buying much better. Mm. Um, yeah. There's always that barrier for people just don't want to deal with sliders and yeah, spreadsheets yeah. and the, the, <laughs> there's that weird stigma where pc just feels that bit more complicated even though we go into the yeah. half steps where you can pick between performance yeah. or graphics now this is effectively a pc tower that you can stick underneath your tv and that blurring of the lines i think mm -hmm. is really fascinating and it's something that i'm very keen to see where it goes over the next few years because like you said you know you associate your pc with just having it on your monitor in a in a mm -hmm. chair in your, your your ultra gamer nerd chair with your your mountain dew and your, your elite headphones and Chatting crap and Jesus, you're, 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 I don't know that's you're what you're doing. Me now. That's exactly. I've read you for <laughs> filth there, James Dallas. Don't deny it. Um, and then obviously the more casual, quote unquote, experience you get from sitting on a, on a on a on a sofa. So I'm interested mm -hmm. that very much by Microsoft blending those two things together into one thing potentially, and where that's going to you know bode for the platform going forward. Yes, and X Cloud, mm -hmm. which I think is another amazing thing, which is just going to knock Stadia out of the park. <laughs> or run hopefully. a stadia. At least yeah, I run a stadia is when I get those adverts on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> but like with I, their I promises of being able to play Halo on the go, not that I would, because mm. I don't want to play Halo on my tiny phone. But the possibility of being able to is quite cool. Mm. When um when PlayStation knocked over their stream into devices, I tried uh full more on my phone for a bit and I was just playing it in bed for it. It just was really weird just to look yeah. at this tiny screen mm -hmm. as I'm just playing this. It doesn't feel right. None of this none of this feels right, and I'm curmudgeoning. I don't trust it. I just want my big TV, <laughs> and I want my console. Yeah. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But we should get to a few more of the games before we have to go. Absolutely. Uh, there was Crossfire X, which is... I've never heard of this, but apparently it's one of the most popular things I in know. time and space. Literally, and I'm Remedy so are making Remedy are making the campaign for it, which is gonna be sweet. But also there was fine print saying it's not gonna be on Game Pass. Yeah. You have to buy the mm -hmm. campaign. And it, I was like, well, it looks it looks really cool. It looks like Tenet in a way. It looks like a Christopher yeah. Nolan military action <laughs> film. And you know, we've seen Remedy do great things over the past couple of years, you know, really exciting studio. And this was the first exclusive that I've seen for the the, the new Xbox where I was like, damn, I really want that. It really looks really, really cool. Um so yeah, that one that one I was very excited for one. Rare's new game as well, um, which I thought had a lot of charm. And of course the weird fish frog amphibian thing that opened up and then more fish came out of its mouth yeah the everwild I mean, was that what it was called? everwild it was yeah. everwild but to yeah. me you could have been describing the gunk yeah but i mean that, that and bug snacks i think <laughs> occupy that similar bracket of just like what the hell was that but also i'm fully here for it so i don't know yeah i quite <laughs> like grounded else? grounded was quite interesting do you know the one where it's set in like a garden mm. yes that was the cool. honey i shrunk the kids game yeah, basically. yeah. that looked cool <laughs> 
<laughs> but you you can see that and that's gonna i think that's gonna be the sort of like the next if he's just esque game where you're just gonna see it par along and then you're gonna find out in a year's time people are just living in it and playing it all the time yeah and streamers are gonna love it and it's gonna be especially the building aspect you put building into a game people just then just take it to the next level and just do things that you've never even thought of yeah but um she's probably gonna say as well that uh stalker 2 again it's been started and stopped and started and stopped for most of my life is <laughs> coming to xbox one and uh, xbox one xbox series x yeah. and the personal computer so that is now also <laughs> gonna be like oh do i do i kick off the mac and do i get a pc or do i get Yes. An Xbox, this is going to sound very dumb of me. Is that the Shadows of Chernobyl game that was show on? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Right, okay. Wow, that was one of those ones that you'd see on the top shelf at Blockbuster and go, "That looks scary," and then never play it. <laughs> scary <laughs> face, yeah, like yeah. The half the face on the cover, and you're like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, we haven't really seen anything of that yet. It could, for me, it's probably going to be. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna scratch that itch of where maybe people aren't gonna find that from a fallout, but mm. with a bit more serious tone to it. A state K free as well. Uh yeah, that started off and I had people said to me, Is this the last of us? I was like, no. No. But you could see the tone was similar. Like, state yeah. K for me. Started fun and they've been trying to get more serious. I feel like yeah. as they've gone along. I don't know, but did you play or State K two at all, Dallas? Like did you I played State of K one, but I never played two. Uh one yeah. was very I enjoyed one. But I knew that there was improvement to be made. Um, but I never to, touched two. Put it this way: playing two on a launch Xbox, the Don Box, uh, you would drive through a certain part of the map, and the game would split in half and break. Like yeah. it was, it was, insane. was it like um, Player Unknown's Battleground when that was first released on Xbox One? That was a mess. <laughs> that, that was that was a journey into into <laughs> life where the game would lag out. You'd be dashboarded, but your character would be there. You'd just be your person would be just running. running off. Yeah, and you'd have to try and get back in before someone pops your head off with a sniper. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, uh, I also think it's there's an, another for, for forza motorsports which um should be of no surprise mm -hmm, people yeah. like the cars the cars make the graphics that are really nice and the cars are also the thing that are gonna be like just look at this let's get involved and also it's, it's weird because recently i'm easy but gran turismo you, you always think that, that that is the big car franchise but forza has eaten their lunch in recent forza, years forza for the past like 10 years been miles and shoulders above where gran turismo is mainly due to inaction from sony and in, on in that sense but yeah forza that forza the horizon games i used to have this really i thought underrated racing game for the xbox 360 called test drive unlimited and i was like that's mm -hmm. a great game the idea of having a car you can go around and just roam around hawaii and have fun and then now you've got horizon doing all these amazing like vistas and it's just beautiful and they're really you know we can talk about how they're just great demos for how what the the graphics are capable of as well but they play through like really well too so you know forza another thing that i am jealous of as a playstation owner the, the problem with forza recently is the motorsport series five six and seven were pretty much copy and paste mm. and that's why there's been such a uh, a long process for this new one to come out because they needed to rework the franchise kind of thing. And aren't they classing that as like a somewhat of a reboot? I don't know how you reboot a car racing game. <laughs> they're <laughs> doing the um, the Halo thing where they're not putting a number on it. They're like, yes, this is going to be yeah. something we can build on and expand, and we're not yeah. really going to go into detail, and it's going to be confusing for years. Can't wait yeah. for Battlefield just to come out in a year's time or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, there's also Fantasy Star Online. I, I, the Safani so Star Online 2, I should say, but number one when that was out on the 360 back when 360 hit homes, that was a revolution for someone who, like me, who had only really like heard of Star Wars Galaxies and sat behind a friend as they played it. So going around and just doing quests and shouting at other people online was it was a it was an eye-opening experience for me. And it's <laughs> weird how it seems again like Phil's going back to getting the fable back in, he's getting Halo back into prominence. Uh, yeah. Fantasy Star Online. It feels like all these. It's almost if they could do something good with Crackdown, they'd have a, a, a good right lineup of the old games that were sort of the hard hitters. But it seems like the Fantasy Star one is scratching the itch, but also it's a game that's really old. I don't yeah. know if it should have been up there for that long. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, like you said, I think you've you've touched on a vital point there, where I feel as though they are trying to channel the nostalgia for the Xbox 360 in a way with some of these titles. Um, but again, you know, it's been so long where I've been out of the picture for Xbox that looking back at it now, I'm like, I've moved past now. 
It's now, yeah. that was 13 mm. years ago. It's 2020 now. It's a nightmare. I don't have time for fun, <laughs> recollecting memories of, of getting teabagged on Halo or doing whatever on, <laughs> on that. So, yeah. Chainsawed um, in the back. Yeah. Psychonauts is definitely the biggest blast from the past, though, because when was that yes. first released? The first one of that? 2005? Something like it? that, I think. I will check. I'm just going to keep was, stretching yeah, was, my voice. There we go. Did it. Great. So it's been 15 years. <laughs> And this was like the token celebrity moment of Keanu from last year, and now it's Jack mm. Black for this year. Mm. <laughs> that looked cool. It looked like a trip. Yeah. <laughs> That's all yeah. it looked like. Load That's of colors. A... I... And uh, also, Outer Worlds DLC, like, I'm excited for that, but also that feels like a game that I was ready. I, I thought it was past gone out to pasture delete off my hard drive so it's gone but i guess that's kind of around it could be good i, I yeah. wonder if they do more of it than just either add things to in the world like they did with a fallout or here's a segmented part of the world where you have to travel via another loading screen and mm -hmm. take 10 hours to get there sort of thing so there's hopes for that as well but really overall it was, it was a weird one it seemed like they were rebooting the brand as such and they yeah. did get in there as well like but we've got destiny 2 stuff now and it's you get the man you go world premiere exclusive premiere it's a premiere of the world and it's ours and just look at it and the premiere like, what do you mean is it a console, <laughs> console launch exclusive world premiere or a thing that's a premiere of a game and you, i don't know what you mean scary voice man just to say is it coming to our console first is it coming to game pass is it coming to xbox one and series x stop saying these words <laughs> Where did this come from? Where? a lot of anger for this man Wow. Okay. Exclusive premiere guy. If you if you are listening, just bear in mind that Ben Roy's words and opinions don't represent what culture is a company. <laughs> the, the the premiere exclusive opinions of one man. But um we should what we should do now, we should finish as I've I'm tearing it down. Let's stoke the fire. Who won? Who won the their event? Did did, did PlayStation 5 event tickle you fancy? Or did this Xbox event make you feel like I'm not gonna get a PC, I'm gonna get the Xbox Series X? I'll let you answer that first, Dallas, because I'm PS5 gonna be five had much more visually impressive games which I wanted to play for their story. Hey um Xbox had games that I can't wait to play with other people. Mm. I mean, that's I, probably my thing. Yeah, yeah. And um, PlayStation, I think, far and away, kind of, because that first reveal for the Xbox Series X and the next generation, I feel as though this event was an addendum to that, in the sense that they realised, oh crap, we didn't really focus too much on the games the first time around. Mm. Let's go and address that now. Whereas PlayStation, I thought, hit it out the park with some really great reveals. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I I thought it was just. Again, I, I probably I'm too biased at this point, but as someone who has yo-yoed between both Xbox and PlayStation and has owned more Xboxes than I have PlayStations, you know, I still think that Sony still have their foot on the gas for for the foreseeable yeah. future, even though Xbox are trying some really innovative new things. Yes. Yeah, and me, I'm gonna get both eventually. Just, yeah. just because why not? There are so yeah. many world premiere exclusive premieres on Xbox. <laughs> I can't not get it, even though <laughs> at heart I enjoy the PlayStation <laughs> series of games. And I don't know, they showed a Resident Evil in the PlayStation one, so they win. No. So there we go. PlayStation <laughs> 5 has won the console wars coming ahead. What do you guys think? Are you happy about the Xbox Series X uh, showcase, shall we say? Are you in? Are you are you sold on Game Pass? Or are you just gonna get a PC? Or maybe just get a PS5. Let us know down below in the comments. Tweet us at what culture gaming hashtag WCDP. You can follow James Douse at James Douse with an extra E at the end. <laughs> and you can follow you in at <laughs> you in ruins things. And you can find exclusive world premieres at Ben Roy Turner on Twitter. Uh, until next time, just keep thinking about the world premieres because we are. Yeah. Bye bye now. That's all we think about. Bye. Premier.